What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to the channel today. I'd like to talk about the kickoff classic for the Call of Duty League, which we had over the past weekend. Kind of give you my thoughts about it. I also got the schedules kind of showing what's going to happen during the regular season. The kickoff classic, of course, was just exhibition matches. Uh, nothing, you know, that, that had any bearing on the season standings or anything like that. Now, I'm no Call of Duty expert. Um, I have played COD since COD 4. I have watched Pro League Call of Duty, if you're an Optic fan, since Big Timer started playing. So I used to watch uh, Pro League Call of Duty back when it was on MLG TV. So I've watched for years and years. I'm just a fan of the sport in general, the fan of the eSport. And I kind of wanted to do some different videos. You know, something a little bit different here on the channel, just kind of talking about the Pro League, you know, what happens week in and week out, you know, with some of these uh, tournaments, the season, that kind of thing. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. It's going to be a bit longer than normal. But like I said, if you do enjoy the content, be sure to subscribe. Uh, hit the like button if you enjoy it. And let's go ahead and hop right into it. Uh, the first couple matches we had uh, were kind of, some of them were, I guess you would say, uh, expected and some of them were not. Uh, kind of unexpected what the uh, outcomes were. The first match of the night, of course, on Saturday was the New York Subliners versus the Dallas Empire. I expected Dallas to win, and I expected Dallas to probably have a 3-0. Um, New York has had some issues with their roster as of late. Zuma just retired about a week ago with a hand injury. Kind of hate to see that because I've enjoyed watching Zuma play over the years. Hopefully he can get back to playing soon. Uh, you know, maybe if not this year, next, hopefully. But with the roster changes, New York not having that long to practice with, the, you know, adding a new person in, I kind of expected Dallas to just dominate them. Of course, Dallas did win the entire thing last year. They won, you know, the COD championship at the end of the year. And Dallas looks to be pretty much like an oil, a uh, well-oiled machine with Krem Six kind of at the lead there with that team. And they did pretty much what I expected. But the one thing I can say, the New York subliners will improve. You don't have Clayster on your team for uh, no reason. He has had teams in the past that people didn't expect anything out of, and they've ended up winning the entire thing. So uh, just keep that in mind. The next match we had were, was the Seattle Surge versus the Los Angeles Gorillas. And this was actually a very, very good match. Wasn't really sure what to expect going into this one. Even though the Los Angeles Gorillas won 3-2, to two, I think the Seattle Surge have the better roster if they play together. Uh, this is a team with some insane talent. And if they play to their potential and can do that week in and week out once the regular season starts, the Seattle Surge are, and the Los Angeles Gorillas both are going to be well improved, I think, from last year's rosters. Uh, the next match we had was the Florida Mutineers versus the Atlanta Fays. Um, two teams that were absolute juggernauts last year and two teams I think are going to be absolute juggernauts this year. Florida Mutineers won 3-2. to two. I think you could have probably played this best of five series over and over and either team could have won, you know, a best of five. So that's how good both of these teams are. That's how well matched they were. I expect Atlanta in the end to be the better team. Uh, Florida last year did win several, you know, uh, home series. So don't count them out. But by the end of the year, Florida kind of dropped off just a little bit while Atlanta, of course, made it to the championship game to play against the Dallas Empire. Uh, the next match, of course, was the Paris Legion versus the London Royal Ravens. Paris won this 3-2. to two. And these are two teams, in my opinion, that are going to be right now from just watching. And, of course, this is from a viewer's uh, perspective, kind of be the middle of the pack teams. These are teams that could beat you on any given day they play you. But at the same time, I don't expect them to be top tier. I don't think they have right now the talent to be top tier. Now, could they be? Of course. Anybody could just you know, mesh really well with their teammates and turn out to be one of the better teams in the league. But from what we saw, uh, it was an incredible match to watch. Of course, anything that's ever 3-2 to two is always a great match to watch. Anything that goes to Game 5. But I just don't, right now, from what we saw I, I, from the exhibition matches, I'm just not sure if the Paris Legion or the London Royal Ravens are going to be top tier. Of course, when the regular season starts, we'll be able to find out a bit more. Minnesota Rocker versus the Toronto Ultra. I still have a good feeling that the Minnesota Rocker is going to cause some problems for some teams. Anytime you add attached to your team, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, the Toronto Ultra did look improved from last year even. I mean, all these teams look a lot better right now than they did last year. I don't know what it is. I, I think it's going back to 4v4. Uh, some of these rosters uh, meshing well together. Some of these teams that have played together, or some of these teammates that have played together in the past, some of these teams just look to be a lot better than they were last year. And I think you can say that for every team that you know played, every team that's in the league. But the Minnesota Rocker, like I said, looked uh, to be the more of the dominant team, even though it was a close game. And I think they will be, uh, like I said, a force to be reckoned with throughout the season. And the last game, the one that everybody was kind of anticipating 
was the LA Thieves versus the uh, versus Optic Chicago. Optic Chicago dominated 3-0. Uh, I think a lot of people were shocked by this. I, I, I kind of was not. I've been watching Optic scrams, been watching Scump scram a lot. Uh, formal dashy uh, envoy. They are playing well right now. Will they continue to play like that? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, will the LA Thieves continue to get 3-0? Definitely not. Uh, if you have Slasher uh, as kind of your leader on your team, as we all know, anytime Slasher has a team, they always seem to be dominant at the end of a game. So it always takes them a little bit of time to improve. Plus, you know, they were kind of up in the air what team they were going to be on, exactly how this was going to work up until about a month ago. So I expect the LA Thieves to definitely improve a lot over the coming months. Now, of course, yesterday we did get a, a look at Stage 1, uh, or, you know, kind of the first home series, Stage 1, Week 2, and Stage 1, Week 3. Uh, how they did this this year was they allowed the teams from the standings from last year to draft other teams into Group A or Group B. So the players or the owners got to decide on what player, you know, or what teams went to which, which group. So, of course, this is going to be the very first week of the Call of Duty Pro League, which starts February the 11th and goes to the 14th. Uh, and you can kind of see the games that you're going to see from Thursday to Sunday. A lot of Call of Duty week in and week out, which I'm really excited about. The great thing about this was I, I thought the idea of allowing the players and the uh, owners to decide what teams are in what group was a really cool thing for the viewers. And, of course, in Group A, we have the Dallas Empire, the L.A. Thieves, the Minnesota Rocker, the London Royal Ravens, the New York Subliners, and the Seattle Surge. In Group B, we have the Atlanta Fays, Optic Chicago, Florida Mutineers, Toronto Ultra, L.A. Gorillas, and Paris Legion. In my opinion, Group B looks to be the stronger group from Atlanta, Optic, and Florida, the way they perform during the exhibition matches. If they perform like that throughout the season, it's going to be a absolute slugfest in that group. Uh, group A, Dallas Empire looked to be the best. Of course, the LA Thieves will improve, and I think the Minnesota Rocker can definitely uh, upset or throw a wrench in some of the plans for the LA Thieves or the Dallas Empire. But overall, in general, uh, group B is definitely right now, in my opinion, the strongest. And you can kind of see how this is going to work. Of course, stage one, week two is going to be February the 18th to the 21st. Each team is going to play two games uh, each week besides one team. You will always see one team on here only playing one game during the week. This is kind of how it's going to work out. Of course, we go to you know the next stage. You will see one of these teams you know play twice this time each week, play only once the next week. So if that kind of makes sense. But how this is going to just work it is overall is they're going to play uh, three weeks. And then at the end of that, they will have a major, which is pretty much like the old Call of Duty tournaments we saw back in the day. You know, when you had Anaheim uh, and those kind of things, uh, you had, you know, MLG Dallas, where they play a tournament with a loser's bracket. You know, the person that wins it, it wins it, wins the money. And then they're going to start over for the next stage. Of course, each time you win, you'll get a certain amount of Call of Duty points. And that will kind of work with the standings uh, week in and week out. But I really like this setup. I think the way they're doing this with stage, uh, you know, stage one, week one, week two, and week three is a really good idea. And then starting over after stage three and, you know, the week four kind of uh, finals, I think this is a really cool way they have done this this year. And, of course, stage one, week three is going to be February the 25th to February the 28th. Once again, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you're a fan of Call of Duty, you're going to have a lot of Call of Duty to watch these weeks. Now, there will be breaks, and of course, between some of these weeks, breaks in between majors and the next stage. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be every single week from now to August, but you're going to have a lot of Call of Duty to watch pretty much every week starting in February until August, and that's one thing that really, really uh, makes me happy overall, uh, to be honest. Anyway, guys, leave me a comment. Let me know. Are you fans of the Call of Duty League? Have you ever watched it? If you haven't, I'm going to highly recommend it if you enjoy playing Call of Duty because watching these professional players is uh, something. Uh, it, it's just amazing to me to watch the movement, to watch the aim, to watch the team coordination, to watch how these guys play. And like I said, it's just something that I enjoy uh, watching, something I really enjoy talking about here on the channel. That's why I decided to do some videos like this, something a little bit different than I normally do here on the channel. Still going to have gameplay and all that stuff like usual of all the different games that I play, but I thought this would be something, you know, something fun to do. So leave me a comment, leave me a like. That way I know you guys enjoy it and I'll continue to do these. And I will see you guys with another video like this probably uh, in the coming weeks when the home series first starts, unless there's some big, you know, CDL news uh, in the next week or so. If you liked it, hit the like and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.